I previously made a video addressing the question of whether and to what degree an understanding of jazz theory is important for the jazz improviser. Reading some comments in response to a recent video has sparked some additional thoughts about that and the nature of learning. One of my maxims as an educator comes from the 16th century astronomer and physicist Galileo. You cannot teach a person anything. You can only help them find it within themselves. So the question that we all need to ask ourselves as musicians is, what are we trying to find within ourselves? As a jazz teacher, the question I need to ask myself is, how can I help you find it? The video that sparked the comments is one in which I talked about the role of the dominant seven in a chord progression, and it leads off a sequence of videos on dominant resolution. Now, whenever music theory enters the jazz improvisation discussion, objections may be heard for a variety of reasons. Some people will disagree with a person's interpretation of the theory, and others will reject theory altogether as antithetical to the creative process. Some of the comments included, I have to remember all of that in a few milliseconds? I don't think so. I believe jazz is a God-given talent. Either you have it or you don't. It's good to know the theory, but the best melody tones are found by listening to your heart. I look at these comments and others as indicative of what many people may think or believe or feel. Now, the first one is very common, that the study of jazz improvisation may seem so complicated that there is so much to remember that it takes the fun out of making music. Having devoted all of my adult life trying to get a handle on playing jazz, including at the present time, I do understand how it feels to have a mass of information coming at you. And with YouTube as an endless source of information, this is more true than ever. At what point do you stop ingesting information and just play? Which even as a word suggests that music should not be thought of as work. Like anything else, jazz improvisation has to be learned step by step. And the information has to be put into practice in order for it to have any relevance or practical purpose. You can't effectively use theoretical information to make music until it's been internalized to the point that you no longer have to consciously think about it. The challenge facing the teacher and the student is knowing how much theoretical information can be absorbed and put into practice at a given moment in time, an amount that can expand understanding without overwhelming. A YouTuber like myself cannot be all things to all people. Some of the videos on this channel go over the heads of some viewers and under the heads of others. If I'm talking about something that is far beyond your current level of comprehension, don't think that you have to master that before you can begin to make music. Take what you can and let the rest of it just wash over you for now. You can have fun playing with whatever level of knowledge and ability you have right now. On that topic, and as to whether the ability to improvise jazz is something you're born with or not, I agree with one aspect of it. Natural talent or aptitude plays a role in everything we do. As to myself, having failed to reach even average height, it would be futile for me to aspire to a career as a basketball player. But that doesn't mean I can't enjoy the process of throwing a ball at the hoop. I've taught students younger than me who have greater natural aptitude than I do as a trumpet player or as an improviser. The only thing that keeps me one step ahead is many years of practice and study and experience. Now I've taught students on the other side of the equation too, both younger and older, who struggle more than others do. And in some cases, they'll abandon the pursuit because of it. For others, it's a personal challenge at each step forward is a victory. Now, in some ways, the gratification of working with those students is even greater because hard-earned victory is the sweetest. My requisite requirement for a student is not whether they have God-given talent, but whether they possess the desire and the willingness to work for what they want. Quoting Andrew Carnegie, he of Carnegie Hall, You cannot push anyone up a ladder unless they are willing to climb. As to whether music should come from the heart, yes. The visual artist studies brush technique and the blending of colors, not to impress a viewer with their technical prowess, but to use that understanding to better express their artistic vision. It's the same thing with music. Music theory helps us to understand the nature of the sounds that we hear, the better to create sounds that express the way we feel. It's a difficult thing to let go of what we know in pursuit of creativity, but I would argue that the solution lies not in not knowing in the first place. I didn't learn to improvise by studying music theory, and it's not uppermost in my mind when I'm improvising, although it is in there somewhere. In my teaching, I make the point that it is but one part of a multi-step process. 
The honest truth is that you can learn more about jazz improvisation from a stack of recordings than a YouTube channel or a book or a class. That's the gist of the videos on this channel pertaining to solo transcription. It's a time-consuming and labor-intensive personal process of exploration, albeit one that I find to be immensely rewarding and one that has led to breakthroughs for many students. A teacher might offer some tips about how to transcribe solos, but in the end, you've got to do the work, feeding sounds in through your ears until they become a part of your being, your musical language. Understanding the nuts and bolts of the music, why one chord leads to the next, and how that might impact a melodic line helps you make sense of those sounds, and can ultimately lead to playing from your heart, not your head.